Welcome back guys. If you are like me and you absolutely love a good photo booth picture, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to do a simple setup and get those photo booth style looks for your events, parties, home photo shoot, Instagram profile picture, whatever you will. So let's jump right in. First, let's talk about what you're gonna need. You're only gonna need four simple things to make this iconic photo booth looking picture. That is a camera, a flash or a bright light source, a tripod, and a white wall. Any camera is really gonna be fine here. It doesn't matter if you have a professional camera or not. As long as your camera has a self timer, you're good to go. For all of my filming, I use the Sony a7 II camera. The really amazing thing about this camera is that I can actually hook it up using the app and the Wi-Fi system installed in the camera to my phone. So I'm able to see myself before I take the picture. It's kind of like a monitor. I'll go ahead and show you guys now. Um, so I can actually see myself in the phone uh, before, I don't know if you guys were able to see that, I can see myself in the phone before I take the picture. <laughs> which being able to see yourself before you take the picture isn't totally necessary, but it's actually a huge help in the framing of the shot. But if you don't have this type of camera, you can at least buy a remote. A remote is a really great investment because it allows you to set off your camera to take the picture while you're standing in the shot already. That way you're not running back and forth and back and forth trying to do self timer. One thing you may wanna think about before setting up your camera is your layout, because depending on where you're gonna be using Using these final images, one format may be better for fitting into a certain crop. For this video, I'm going to be using a horizontal format rather than vertical because I'm already filming in horizontal, so it's just easier. And also, I already know that in the final images, I've picked out a cute template that has like a film strip on it that I want to put the images to, and I know that that template is in horizontal format. One thing to note is that a horizontal layout is going to allow you to fit more people into the frame at once. This is going to be especially good if you're setting this style up in an event or a party where people are going to want to have their pictures made together. Next, let's talk about lighting. Typically, you're going to want to use a proper bright flash because in a real photo booth, it's that flash that gives you that sort of washed out high contrast look. You can pick up an on-camera flash from anywhere between $20 to $200, but I think the cheap ones work just fine. Usually for this type of thing, you're not going to need a super expensive flash, and I found through experience that the cheap ones do the same thing anyway. If you don't have a flash, you can use an LED light panel or another just bright light source, but you want to make sure that you position it directly above and behind your camera so that all of the shadows are going to fall below and behind your subject and you're not going to cast a shadow to one side or the other. Finally, a tripod. You definitely need a tripod unless you're gonna have somebody stand there and be your photo booth photographer. Although even then, I think personally that it looks better to have a tripod because you get a certain consistency between every single shot because when your camera's on a tripod, the angles don't change as much as if you have a person standing there kind of trying to get the best shot. I recommend setting up your camera right on top of the tripod and not having it point necessarily down or up. It should be right at eye level with your subjects. You're also going to need just a plain white wall or some white paper to cover up the wall behind you. If you want that really iconic photo booth look, it's usually on a white background. If you're going for more of a colorful looking theme, you could find a colored paper to tape up. Or if you want a really old school photo booth look, they did use curtains behind them as well. But when I think of a photo booth, the most common thought that comes to mind is just the plain white background. You can you can also use a black background, but it ends up looking a bit more like a studio setting rather than a photo booth. With that said, here is a quick little video played at 1000% of me making space. Additionally, you want to pick out a cute outfit, anything but white, because when you wear a white shirt on a white background, you end up looking like a floating head and arms. 
So black clothing is usually a really good option if you want that sort of classic look or you can go for something really fun like a fun texture or print. Today I am going with this little black top and bandana tied ensemble. You can choose to use photo booth props if you wish like those ones that are stuck to sticks that you kind of hold up to your face like glasses or a mustache but I feel like these are oftentimes really cheesy and it's a lot more natural just to use a regular pair of sunglasses glasses and maybe a fun drink <laughs> okay so I'm just switching over to the vlog camera now so that I can show you guys my little setup I have my white wall here with my camera and my table with my props on it and a stool you can see that my stool and my camera are not super far apart so when I sit there it's super close to the camera um, I'm also using a wide angle lens because I feel like these um, pictures are usually super wide angle. So right now I have it at 28 and I feel like that's a really good um, distance between wide angle and looking like a photo booth and being able to get quite close and have those kind of flashed out angled shots. You can also see I have my on-camera flash here and I have a little diffuser that goes over the front of this and it just kind of makes those highlights not so terribly sharp. Um, that way you don't look like really washed out completely. Now I want to show you guys some of my go-to poses for photo booths or just silly cute poses in general because taking a picture in a photo booth can definitely be sort of awkward and you don't want to end up with the same six pictures of you just like blowing a kiss or smiling. The lol because a laughing picture is cute as all get out. The hair moustache. Very funny cute secret identity style. Hand on face. You can lean, lay, there's many different options. The thinking eye roll, very cute. You can also combine this with the hand to face shot. Thinking eye roll, hand to face. The eyebrow lift. You do have to be able to do this one. Maybe some of you can do the eyebrow dance. Or you can do the surprise look with two eyebrows. The superhero hand mask. You can go just one, do this, turn it upside down, and do a full face. The serious movie star pose. You just put on your movie star face. The movie star face. Shh. Literally. This one's a little bit difficult for me to do right now because I do have this bandana in, but if you just have your hair normal, you can do the scrunchy hair pose. Scrunchy hair pose. Okay, totally messed up my hair there. Tame the mane, back down. Tame the mane. Your angry face. That lion, channel that. Channel that inner lion. Tongue out. Bite your lip. Bunny ears. Just make sure you don't have like deodorant splotches underneath there. Cover an eye. When I covered, point at the camera. These are a few quick poses that you can try yourself or if you're setting this up for a party or an event and you have a subject come in and ask you what they should do or how they should pose, you can suggest one of these poses. Now obviously I just showed you guys the final edits, but when you first take the images they're not going to be already put in black and white, edited, and put into your template. So now I'm going to show you what I do to the images to really make them pop and stand out and also to get them ready to put into the template and ready to print to hand out to friends or Keep. So you can see they're looking pretty good and the flash does a lot of the contrast work for you but they're not quite done yet. You want to make them look really photo booth classic chic by doing a couple editing tricks like upping your contrast and placing them into a strip collage. You can use really any type of editing software for these few easy steps but I'll show you my flow in camera raw and photoshop because that's what I use most often. For these photo booth images I don't really need to do a ton of in-depth editing so I actually do all of the image editing, if you will, in Camera Raw, which is the program that Photoshop first opens your images in before putting them 
in the actual Photoshop program. Here I have all of my images open and I have already done this one specific image so now I can select them all by pressing Command A and you can see it selects them all in the sidebar here and I can make all of the same adjustments that I've made to this black and white image at once to all of the other images. I don't really do a ton of editing it to the images. I change the standard mode from Adobe Standard to Camera Standard, convert them to grayscale. I also up the contrast and add a little bit of grain. After I make the adjustments to my photos in Camera Raw, I then pull them into Photoshop along with my template. I scale the images down to roughly the size that will fit inside the template. Then I select and mask out the template and drag that layer to the top, leaving all of the images to fall behind the mask. You can still see the edges of the images through the cutout bits of the template on the sides, so I just take a brush and brush on the mask layer to bring back the original white background of the template to hide those bits of the images behind. And now you're ready to print. I printed these out on my regular desk jet printer because coronavirus and shops are closed and I can't get to a regular photo printer, but all considering, I think that they turned out pretty good for just being printed on regular paper. You could totally stick this in a photo album or hand it to a friend. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Ruddick for all the latest quirks in my daily life and to see more of my work. Also, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for my weekly filmmaking and photography videos. I make all sorts of fun tip videos about photo and film and more. If there's anything specific you guys would like to see, just let me know in the comments below. So until next time, peace. Know what I got, know what I want. Boy, don't get me wrong. Sure, we're having fun. But it don't mean that I'm in love. I like you a lot.